Okay, I'm starting a new season of tutorials, if you will. I promised that I would start uh, getting into Blender and into appending 3D objects to this basic plane in Plane Maker. Since where we left off, I did some refinements to this plane. I, uh, I added the 2D panel and did some custom work on it. It's not completely customized, but um, just so you know, a lot of these things would still probably be uh, customizable. I just figured that I'm going to make a 3D cockpit anyway, so I'm not, I shouldn't be wasting my time on making a 2D cockpit completely because I mentioned already in the tutorials that it's kind of hard to place 3D objects into a 2D plane and have it turn out accurate. So my intention is to make this plane with a 3D cockpit that looks accurate. So uh, yeah, if you, if you have the patience to stick around long enough, we'll get to that in later tutorials. So my goal now is to show you how to append an object that was created in Blender to this plane. It's, gonna, it's a very simple process. First of all, we have to create a directory in the ERJ140 folder called Objects. So go to Command Shift N for New Folder and I call it Objects with a small o. This is always when X-Plane starts up and loads up your plane, it's always going to look for this Objects folder and whatever objects are in that folder it's going to append to your plane if you've told it to. Okay, so now that I have my Objects folder here, let's go and uh, download Blender if you haven't done so yet. Blender is a 3D graphics program that has a lot of power. Here's a gallery that I thought I might show you. It's a program that takes that took me by surprise with its complexity and with its uh, completeness. You can make games with it. They've made three movies with it or they're working on the third movie right now and obviously almost photorealistic renders. I mean what we're doing in Plane Maker is just scratching the surface of Blender. So here's a little screen uh, video of the, uh, play, of the game that they made. And keep in mind, all these games, all of this is open source, meaning you have access to the game character and you can change them around. You can create your own game if you want. So um, this is the sort of uh, graphic quality that you get out of this open source free program. I mean, it's, it's really quite amazing. So, um, but what we're going to use Blender for for now is just to append objects to Plane Maker uh, created planes. So the other thing we need, once we've downloaded and installed Blender, which you can get here from blender.org, you just click on the download link here. This is the front page. We'll also need a plugin called Xplane to Blender. Xplane to Blender. And your best bet is to look it up on Google. That's always how I find it. And uh, you click on this link. This, if, you, if you really want to know the path, it's on downloads, utilities, scenery and cockpit, import and export scripts for Blender and you click on the download button and once you have it downloaded uh, you open the folder and you install it by just double clicking on one of these command uh, prompts. Either the black one is for the Mac, the blue one is for the PC depending on what computer you use this is multi-platform because it's just Python script language so you should be fine with that. Once it's installed I'll just run you through the install process to tell you what it looks like. Process completed, it's just a script that runs and puts some files in some folders and that allows Blender now to be able to export files in the format that PlayMaker can understand. So let's try that out. I have Blender installed already. It's not hard to install at all. It's a very tiny program. So the first thing we see is a camera, a light, and a cube. And this is the standard layout, the default layout. You can change it if you want, but I'll get to that later. Uh, first thing we need to do is save this Blender file. And we're going to save it in the ERJ140 slash objects folder that we just created. And I'll call this test cube dot blend. You don't even have to add the dot blend, it'll do it automatically for you. But I'll save it as that. And now let's go back to the folder where we had uh, this object. And sure enough, it saved it there as test cube dot blend in the objects folder. All right, I want to export this as an object file that PlaneMaker can read. So I go down here to export. And it's way at the bottom here, xplane version 8 version 9 object.obj. This is a file format that xplane can read. So we do that, and it tells me that it's exported 25 primitives. Okay, that's good to know. Now I go back to my PlaneMaker software, and I want to see what it looks like on this plane. So I have to append it. I have to attach it somehow to this plane. So the way we do that is we go to the standard menu, and we go to miscellaneous objects. And then we click on this button here, and we load up the object, testcube.obj. And you see it here already, kind of. I'll close this window to make the plane bigger. You see that here we have the, the cube. 
And you also see here there's a light that got carried over from Blender to X-Plane. I just want to point out that you can um, move this object around and it will move the entire scene that got exported from Blender. So you don't have the control to move this light one way and the cube the other way and that sort of thing. I personally use these controls very sparingly. I hardly ever use these kinds of controls here because I prefer to do all my positioning in Blender because that gives me most control and I don't... Uh, but this, this can be used to correct a position that's somehow off. And then you can also attach things to for example, um, if I'm making a flap track out of that out of that cube, I can attach it to the flap, and you see that the cube now moves together with the flaps as they are deployed. Okay, so this is only half the story. What about getting this plane into Blender? Because what if I want to make high detailed parts to bring them back into Blender? I mean, making a cube and importing it here is fine and dandy, but I didn't get a sense for the position of where this cube could be located and all those things, I have to get this plane into Blender in order to really do some amazing work. And just before I did this tutorial, I realized that because version 9.20 of Plane Maker is out, or actually now it's already at 9.30, beta 12, uh, the import and export script does not really do such a good job of importing complete planes. Actually, it, right now it's non-functional. So we have to go in and export this plane as an object file. So the way we do that is we go to Special, and we go Generate Object from Aircraft. And this will generate a file inside the Plane Maker folder called airplane.obj. And it's a very generic title, so if you do this a lot, you'll, you might get very confused. So what I would recommend is right away when you do this, rename this object to, um, to the name of your plane, and then dump it into your... Um, your actual folder just so it doesn't get cluttered with with aircraft.obj files that you don't know where they come from and since you can't just double click on this file uh, blender won't read this file directly so you're going to actually have to import it using the that blender script so here we are again in blender and i'm going to go to the import script here x plane object so again let me just show you what happened to me when i tried to import an aircraft file acf stands for aircraft so I go here and I try to import the ERJ140.ACF format and here's what I get the error. Can't read 9.20 format planes, unfortunately. So we'll have to resort to the other method of getting that plane into Blender, which is by importing the object file that we exported just now from the Plane Maker software. So here we are, and here's our ERJ140 object that I renamed and put into this folder. I middle click on it with my mouse wheel and now it brings in the file and tells me how many primitives it loaded in and that I can't find a certain texture file. Well, uh, this is now the plane inside Blender. So great news, we just got that plane into Blender and can work with it now. What you'll probably run into next is frustration in navigating through Blender. This is what I'm going to cover in my next video tutorial. It takes a little while to get used to in terms of navigating it. It's similar to Google Earth in some ways. When you press the middle mouse button, the plane rotates around uh, the axis. You can always snap back to the center to have this cursor be the center by going C. And just to warn you now already, the left mouse button does not do what you think it does. The left mouse button is not used to select items. It's used to move the 3D cursor around. It is handy. Uh, it takes some getting used to, but it is handy. The right mouse button does the selecting. So you'll have to spend some time getting used to that. So then there's other key commands and navigational stuff that I'll walk you through in the next couple of tutorials, and then we'll really get busy adding the detail that we want to add to this plane. So I hope this was a good introduction to how Blender and X-Plane can work together, and I hope you stick around for the rest of the tutorials that I'm going to do. Thank you.